9. It's the latest and greatest in the Avidyne universe. For quite a while now, we've been hearing about the next generation, what was to come. Obviously, everybody's looking for capability. What can it do? But somehow, it just doesn't seem to get as much attention right off the bat as how does it do so. And in the case of Release 9, one word, simple. Let's fly along in 753 Charlie Delta, the demo ship for uh, Avidyne's Release 9. Take a look at how it does in the real world. We have power. We have tape, 100%. Lighten the nose. There we go. And that is a beautiful display. That it's the uh, safest and easiest way to handle emergencies. Why? Because if we lost one display, the only thing that would happen is that this display would turn into this display if gotcha. we lost the PFD. But you'd still have all the different tabs and all the different abilities to do everything you need with these two displays. Okay. So the concept is you basically have a five display system. You have the PFD, your box below the PFD here, your screen here that could be a two display or a one big display of a map or a split map or a flight plan with data blocks, okay. and your CDU, which has data blocks and has your frequencies. With the five of these, so okay. it's the safest system to handle emergencies if we lose it in eight of hours. Right now, we've got this IFD following this eight of hours, this one following this eight of hours. If one of them craps out, everybody's on the same data bus. This is what's great about the data bus technology. We can go to systems. We can go to sensor. We see that they're all OK. And we can decide if we want the ADAHARS to be automatically, one side each, or I want both IFDs to fly off ADAHARS number two. Okay. Or both of them to fly over ADAHARS number one, or auto. Auto means they each fly their own, and if one fails, it switches to the one that's remaining. Okay. So you're, it's going to be a non-event. You're going to get an annunciation. You're going to know about it. You may exercise your judgment to see that it's doing the right thing. There's no need to fly differently. So you fly an emergency the same way we fly normally. You train as you fly, you fly as you train. Cirrus Design's Vision SJ50 single engine personal jet offers exceptional fuel efficiency, flexible seating for up to seven, advanced avionics, and all the Cirrus safety features you expect, including the Cirrus airframe parachute system. With its detailed design, the Cirrus Vision is technologically advanced, yet engineered to be simple to fly to allow owner pilots more lifestyle pursuits than any other personal aircraft. Learn more about the Vision SJ50 at CirrusDesign.com. Uh, we've got our heading bug set, we've got our altitude set. Um, so you can fly manually or you can punch the autopilot and have it do all the work for you here now. All you okay. need to do is, is um, all you need to do is push vectors here. Vectors. We'll get we'll get nav nav mode here. And now it's active. See, the bug became solid. That means the autopilot's following it. Okay. Now do V-speed uh, and altitude at the same time on the autopilot. And now you want to turn right, you just turn the heading. And you'll see you got the heading bug, and you have your vectors bug. That tells you your ground track. All right. And you're good to go. Now, if you'll notice, what happened now is your vectors mode is now intersecting your active leg. Yeah from your origin to your destination, direct to is what our flight plan was. Okay. And so now, it will intercept it when it gets there. Gotcha. Should you wish to not intercept, on the left um, LSK there, this one on the bottom here, it says disarm intercept. Okay. So if you press that, then you'll see, go ahead, press that, and you'll see what it does. Now, you see the dashed line will follow through. Okay. So you can actually see what it's going to do. All right. Next, it, you're going to fly through now. If you arm intercept again, as simple as that. Now it's going to intercept. Okay. And if you have a steeper angle, you'll see the curve as it goes there. So okay. now if you go to checklist on your PFD side, you'll be able to read through it, see that you're all set, fuel pump, flaps are up, make sure fuel pump is off. So next checklist, yep. cruise, which we're not quite, at. well, we're at cruise now. That's it, you're on cruise. And if now we had our flight plan that we put on the ground with the Victor Airways and whatever, it, that, it's it. Okay. Now the airplane will fly itself all the way through to destination. Okay. We're 28, six miles away, which will give us 11 minutes, 30 gallons, and the time we get there.
from the mountains to the prairies. To the landings that we love. Garmin SVT, Synthetic Vision Technology. Well, there you have it. You, you promised simple, you delivered simple. But what is Release 9 really all about? What do you expect to do with this platform? Um, well, we expect to uh, address the need that is out there for the install base to have, as you said, more capabilities, uh, higher performance, and a safer system that is simple, intuitive to fly. There is a 4,000 strong install base out there with the Cirrus community, and they are just lining up, wanting to experience this just like you will and have today, and, uh, and to get this into their aircraft. Well, you've already launched uh, one OEM contract, as, uh, from what I understand, and I'm, I'm sure there's a bunch of folks that are looking very carefully at this. But it seems to me that the onus should be placed on one particular fact, and that is that the single pilot IFR environment, which is what these airplanes are all about, is not getting any easier. And the more that we can do to lower the workload and provide a more methodical, simpler, basic approach to doing very complex things, the better off we are. You're absolutely right, and the airspace is becoming um, a lot higher performance and enables us to do um, LPV approaches, it enables us to do precision approaches using GPSS WAS, and this is what the system is all about. However, we have spent years, this has been six, seven years in the working, of trying to make it simple, trying to make it intuitive. And so it is the single um, pilot IFR environment that drove us to have the high capability but the single pilot aspect of it to keep it simple and intuitive. As a byproduct, you get a, si a system that is also the simplest, safest, and easiest to use for the VFR pilots, the ones who fly direct or vectors mode um, all the time. It's the simplest and safest and most intuitive to train, to handle emergencies, and to stay current, which is very important for those who don't fly every day using complex FMS systems. As it stands right now, you've got an incredibly complex system. As I understand, on the, uh, on the drawing boards for the very near future, we're talking synthetic vision, enhanced vision, and, well, best of all, digital autopilot. Yes, so Avidyne is continuing to innovate. We innovate uh, with several new announcements and products per year, and so you can bet that we are going to come out with a very impressive synthetic vision, very impressive enhanced vision system, and autopilot. Very exciting. This release 9 is um, the next level of integration in the fact that the autopilot is engaged once after takeoff and disengaged just before landing, and the flight is actually managed through the flight management system. The FMS directs the autopilot to change modes and um, to go into approach mode, etc. So the FMS is already managing the autopilot in a way that the integration is fabulous. Um, Avidyne's autopilot is, is hopefully going to take that integration to the next level as far as the precision of the autopilot flying.